Last video, we talked about truth trees for and, or, and the negation, and I gave you a couple practice questions. In this video, we're going to go over the solutions. So as always, if the videos have helped and you have the financial means, you can join the channel as a member for two or five dollars Canadian a month to support videos, or you can like, share, comment, do all the YouTube things. Both of those help me out immensely, so thank you all for your support, no matter how you're giving it. Anyways, solutions. We need to show that these three well-formed formulas are inconsistent, which means we need to draw a truth tree where all of the branches close. Now, because these truth trees might get big, I'm going to put on some lines so that way I can make sure everything is neat and tidy, so I'm sorry the video will look a little bit uglier than normal, but for the sake of clarity and making sure everything's lined up, that's how it's going to be. So, let's take a look at this. We have P and Q or not R, and we have not P and Q. So we have two complex woofs that we have to deal with. Now, both of these are going to end up branching. So let's just do one right away. Let's just deal with one. So let's start by branching one off into two different paths. We're going to have one path that gives us P and Q. And we're going to have one path that gives us not R. So that one is dealt with. Remember, the different branches mean or. So we can justify this, we call this line four, and we say from one, we did or decomposition. Now, in line five and line six, I have P and Q in my left branch, so I wanna take care of this. Okay? I wanna separate this into P and Q. So from line four in both of those, we did and decomposition. Now, on the right side, what do we notice? We have R, we have not R. So we have a contradiction on that right branch, so we can close it right off the bat. So now we don't have to branch that one out anymore. We just have to deal with our leftmost branch. Now what do I see? In line two, I have a complex with not P and Q, so we need to deal with this. Now when is not P and Q true? Okay. So not P and Q is true when P and Q is false. Now this means that either P is false or Q is false, which means that not P is true or not Q is true. So when we branch this off here, on one side we're going to get not P is true, and on the other side we're going to get not Q as being true. So we'll call this one line 7. This comes from line 2, and this is not and decomposition. Now what do we know here? Well, we can close off the left branch because we have not P and P. And we can close off this right branch because we have Q and not Q. So at this point, everything is taken care of. All of our branches are closed. Therefore, we know that this is an inconsistent set of well-formed formulas. So if we take off the lines there, we can see it with a little bit more beauty. Allow me to erase the circles, but this might be a much clearer picture. And now that all the lines are gone, it looks nicer and everything is lined up. So that's how we do our first truth tree. Let's do our second truth tree for P and Q and R and not P and Q and R. So this is just like P and not P, and we know this is a contradiction. We know this isn't going to be consistent. This is inconsistent. But with a truth tree, it's a little bit more work to show. But let's do it anyway. Lines engage. Okay. So P and Q and R. And decomposition just lets us write things out in the one branch. So let's just deal with one right off the bat. We're going to get P and Q. We're going to get R. So that'll be line three and line four. Uh, that comes from one, and this is and decomposition for both of these. What I want to do now is I want to do the same thing with P and Q. So we'll break this up into P and Q. So lines five and six. Uh, this comes from three and three. And this will be and decomposition. Okay, so at this point, we just have one more complex well-formed formula left, and that is not P and Q and R. Now, we did this one previously, so this is going to branch off into two different situations. One situation where not P is true, and another situation where not Q and R is true. So, again, to quickly go over this again, why this works. Uh, not P and Q and R. When is this true? Well, this is true when P and Q and R is false. So when is that false? It's going to be false when P is false and when Q and R 
is false. Sorry, I should say, or when q and r is false. So when we can negate those false to get trues. And that gives us not p or not q and r. Okay. Now it's nice. Well, we call this first. I should say it's nice after we do this. So that's line seven. Uh, this comes from line two. And this is not and decomposition. Okay. Our left branch closes because we have p and we have not p. So that gives us a contradiction. It's impossible for p and not p to be true at the same time. Now we ought to deal with not q and r. And we're going to get the same process occurring here. So not q and r is going to split up into two different well-formed formulas, not q, not r, since not q and r is true when not q is true or not r is true. So that will come from line 7, and this is not and decomposition. What do we have here? Well, q and not q gives us a contradiction, so that branch will close. And then r and not r gives us a contradiction, so that branch closes. So therefore, because all of the branches here have closed, we know that this set of well-formed formulas is inconsistent. And we could have known that just by looking at it at the beginning, because the two well-formed formulas that we're looking at are just a negated form of themselves. So p and q and r, not p and q and r. So this is equivalent to p and not p, which we know is a contradiction. So this is how we do truth trees. As you can see, this was a little bit more complex of a way to show that this is inconsistent. But when you get to modal logic, truth trees save you a lot of time. So although it might be a little bit cumbersome for propositional logic when you get to other forms of logic, you'll understand why truth trees are practiced and why they're shown early. So that's it for questions in this video. If you have any questions at all, feel free to post them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to you when I can.